Good morning. Good morning. I am Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. And joining me today, well, this morning, is Dana Scharf, the Big 12 VP Women's Basketball. How are you, ma'am? I'm doing great, Chris. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you for taking time to do this. Uh, first things first, when did we first meet? Do you remember that? I think it was at the mock selection. Um, I can't remember what year it was. It was before COVID. That's, mm -hmm. that's how I tell time now. But um, <clears throat> I, can you, I don't know if you remember the year, but uh, that was the I first time, I think. Yeah, I, I want to say 2019 or so, something like that. Yeah. I miss those mock selections. I really enjoyed those. Yeah, they're, they're very enlightening. Indeed, and, and got, I got a chance to meet people like you throughout that process and learn how the ins and outs of how the committee put together their bracket for the tournament, all that great stuff. But yeah. this conversation, I'd like to ask you your role as VP of women's basketball for the Big 12. What does that mean? What does that entail? Yes, well, as you know, I've been here a long time and I've worked with all the sports, really, except for men's basketball and football. So now just with the kind of the time we're in, uh, really felt a focus on women's basketball would be very uh, important at this time just to double down on the sport and, and with its growth. So it allows me to spend a little bit more time focused on women's basketball. How do we elevate it? How do we leverage our brand? How do we create new and unique opportunities for student athletes? So I'm really looking forward to it, getting more into it. Obviously, it's just been uh, two months. Um, but really looking forward to spending more time on women's basketball. How long have you been with the Big 12? Uh, 25 years. Actually, I think this week is my 25th anniversary. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. How has the conference evolved in your time in those 25 years, in your opinion? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's constantly evolved, uh, particularly the last 12 years or so. Um, you know, it's it's exciting. Um, I'm really excited about being a 16 team league this year and with the women's basketball teams we have. So just really looking forward to it. Feel our best days are ahead of us and uh, just looking forward to being a part of it. Now, you, you you touched on it. You became the official VP of women's basketball two months ago. Was that your decision or did the commissioner decide to do that? How did that come about? Yeah, it was the commissioner's decision, um, again, just with the growth of women's basketball and the importance of it. So um, just, yeah, it was his, his decision. I gladly, gladly took him up on that. In his short time as commissioner of the Big 12, what are your impressions of Mr. Yormark? Uh, he's been really great at helping us to think outside of the box. Um, as you know, he's introduced some things that are different than, than many other conferences have done. Um, so that's been really helpful and just really focusing on making the Big 12 the best version of itself and not trying to be somebody else. Um, those are the, the takeaways that I try to apply daily uh, in my role. What are your expectations for Big 12 women's hoops for this coming season? I have big, ex big expectations. Um, with 16 teams, we have 15 of the 16 were in the top 100. 101 in RPI last season. So a lot of parity, a lot of excitement. Um, you know, eight teams, half the league last year was in the NCAA tournament. They all won their first games in the tournament. Uh, we also had teams with great crowds and following. So just really looking forward to a very exciting uh, competitive season. Do you have plans or do you have suggestions for the coaches when it comes to their non-conference schedules? We don't have any prescribed policies for coaches or scheduling policies for coaches. Uh, they've done a, a pretty good job on their, their own, just based on uh, different conversations that we have with our scheduler, with the coaches, where they can get advice. It obviously paid off really well last year, uh, just with the RPI um, of our league. Are there things, well, how can the Big 12 get better, women's basketball? Yeah, I think uh, continuing to... Uh, to, to schedule well, um, and that's based on where, you know, your team is. Um, continue, I think we have a lot of um, marquee non-conference games coming up this year, uh, maybe I think more so than previous years. I think that will be great for the league in terms of really getting that exposure. I feel like we've been a, a great league, but sometimes people don't know about our teams and how good they are. So um, that is something I'm really hopeful that we can do a good job of this year. 
in your opinion, does it hurt the league, hurt the Big 12 to not have one flag pole team like a UConn or a South Carolina in the conference? No, I mean, I think we have several teams right now that can win the league. And I just think that excitement is great. Obviously, you know, having those those flagpole teams are, are also great. But I think I really like the way that we are situated. And especially with so many new teams in the last couple years, it's just really exciting that everybody feels they have an opportunity to do well. What are your thoughts of these last few years of women's basketball, the growth has been exponential. Just what are your, what's your personal feeling on that, that growth? Well, I'm just glad that it's, it's happening. Um, I mean, it's obviously something we've been, you know, we've loved women's basketball for so long and, and just to see it start to get that recognition and just drawing in more fans. Um, it's, it's, it's just fun to see it. It's very warranted. I mean, we have incredible student athletes. Um, really excited about getting their stories out this year and, and just having more people come and, and watch, watch the game, enjoy the game. And, um, you know, I think they feed off each other. The crowd feeds off the fans or the team feeds off the fans and vice versa. So just really looking forward to that. How valuable has the uh, digital component, the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus been to women's basketball specifically? Um, I really enjoy it. I mean, Oliver, it's one stop shop really for all of our games. Uh, you just go to the app and go to Big 12 and, and you can find all of our games. Uh, it's just you can watch wherever you are. Um, so I, I really it's been very convenient uh, compared to what we've experienced, you know, five, 10 years ago. But just to have that one stop shop it is great to watch women's basketball. Are there any concerns that you have or or have heard from coaches regarding anything with uh, women's basketball? Um, I just I think the main thing is just continuing to get our story out. Uh, you know, last year in the tournament, it seemed like there was a lot of chatter in the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of chatter, you know, about the Big 12, uh, particularly the West Virginia Iowa game. People are like, wow, this West Virginia team's like really good. And uh, we're like, yeah, <laughs> we, we know that we've, we've seen it all year. Um, so I think just continuing to to get that out. And we have some different avenues um, that we're working on to get the story out. We're starting tune in radio this week, Big 12 station on tune in radio, which will will help uh, also exploring things like a fast channel uh, to get some storytelling out. So just trying to find new new and unique ways. And then we'll probably have some more information come media days um, about some of that. But but just really getting the word out. You know, I'm a basketball person, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Now, the tune-in announcement was made at Big 12 Football Media Day, so the slant obviously was toward football. But I'm glad you mentioned tune-in regarding basketball. So if you can, just share a little bit more about Big 12 hoops on tune-in. Yeah, I mean, we'll have weekly shows on there. Um, obviously, a lot of that will be basketball focused once we get to basketball season and hopefully some before then, some previews and things. So still um, kind of fleshing all that out and scheduling it out, but definitely will include women's basketball. And Big 12 basketball tip-off media days will be in October in Kansas City again. How, how beneficial and Kansas City having it there as a host for the tournament the championship been to the conference? Yeah, it's it's a it's just a great focal you know centerpiece for the event. Um, it really gives it a great feel to be in the arena. Uh, the women will be on October 22nd. The men will be the next day on October 23rd, uh, and just have that energy and excitement there, and and being able to connect with the community where our championship is. Uh, we have some events you know around that to engage the community and just really get them excited about the event. Uh, so that is something we're going to put some extra focus on this year, particularly with the women's event and reaching out to certain uh, groups and organizations that we feel can help us with the championship. And I forgot to ask you this, but any more uh, <clears throat> definitive details about the start of the FAST channel for the conference, when that's going to take place? Not yet, uh, still being uh, worked out um, by our, our TV, TV team, so. And what, what are your thoughts I mean, that's just another uh, example of technology in the evolution. Five years ago, if, you know, if we would have met or while we were at the mock selection and someone would have suggested or mentioned a fast channel, we would have been like, 
what is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, yeah, it would be great just to have that content available, um, you know, when, when fans want to watch it. So looking forward to just ironing out the details of that. And and I think what is the F and Fast is free. So, you know, just right. the app. <laughs> <laughs> free ad supported television. So that that is excellent. I didn't want to take too much of your time today. Just wanted to touch base with you. Yeah. In terms of um, scheduling, once conference play starts, how do you go about seeing what teams win as far as your travel schedule? Yeah, I try to see every team at least once. Uh, so I try to do that efficiently, um, but I definitely will make sure I get to all the new institutions uh, just to see their operations and, and meet with their folks. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a coordinated process. There's not, you know, uh, one method that, that works every year, but just trying to see as many games as possible or as many teams as possible, and then obviously watching on the ESPN Plus app. And what are your thoughts on the additions of Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, obviously, Colorado, we've had in the league before, great women's basketball history, uh, and Utah's done really well. Arizona's done really well. Arizona State also has some good success. So just really looking forward uh, to having them in the league, building new rivalries. I uh, feel like Colorado may already have a little bit of rivalry going again with Kansas State after that NCAA tournament game last year. But uh, just really excited. They're great coaches, um, great student athletes. Actually, we have, you know, the way the transfer portal works, we have several Big 12 players on their teams um, that transferred to, to one of those four programs. So um, it's, it's, it'll be exciting. They, they bring great crowds as well. So looking forward to seeing their venues and, and getting to know their teams. In your role, in your position, each season, do you have in mind like an ideal number of teams you'd like to see reach the NCAA tournament? Um, I mean, it varies because you can, you know, each year is a little bit different. Um, but knowing that eight of our 16 reached last year, I would hope that we can get, you know, 50% um, or more in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and then obviously we have the WBIT now. Uh, we had teams in that last year too. So just, uh, we, we've done pretty well getting over 50% in the postseason. So just continue uh, with that and continue to get more and more in the, the NCAA tournament. My last question for you just popped in my head. What are your thoughts on units being passed eventually, you know, mm -hmm. what's it going to be January for right. payouts for the women's tournament starting next year in 2025? No, I, I think it's it's great. Um, as you said, yes, it will be voted on January 2025. Um, just saw some some Q&A on that actually today. So, um, you know, it's something that's been talked about and discussed for a long, long time. And uh, I'm just excited that it looks like it's going to come to fruition. Thank you, ma'am. I hope to see you. We, oh, well, will you be? Yeah, I'll in see Kansas City in October? I'll, I'll see. Yeah, definitely. I'll be seeing Kansas City. Okay, well, I hope to see you in, a, wow, two months. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Anytime. All right, thank you, Dana. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.